could you please introduce yourself and tell us what role is yours in the Air Force and do you absolutely love it? So I am Tori Turner. Um, I am a pilot in the Air Force, so I am a Typhoon pilot. Uh, and yes, I do absolutely love it. Yeah, I love it. I mean, with every job, right? There's times when you don't, but I think on the whole, I've been doing it for 20 years now, so it's doing something right. So yeah, I'd say I love it on the whole. Uh, I'm Helen. I'm also a pilot, Typhoon, and uh, I'm on 41 Squadron, which is the test squadron. So I uh, look at new bits of stuff coming onto the aeroplane and make sure it works. What did you do before you joined up? So before I joined up, I was at university. So I've been in the Air Force now for 12 years. I joined in 2008. Um, it's coming off my head, yeah. Um, and before that, I went to university. Um, I went to um, Imperial College in London. Um, and that was pretty much it. So uh, I've been in since uh, 2000. So I've been in uh, 20 odd years. Um, and uh, I am similar to you in that I went from school to uni, reading, uh, as we talked about medicine, um, and then straight from um, uni to the Air Force. But obviously, there was a bit of a change of career path because I decided to leave med school and join the Air Force as a pilot. Way better. <laughs> My mum blames me for having her grey hair. What was the thing you found the most fun in training? The thing I found most fun in training was the fun like it was just so much fun like you're suddenly with a bunch of people who you all think the same you're all doing the same thing and by think the same as in you're all motivated you're all you like having a good time you like doing things to a really high standard because that's kind of essential if you want to do what we do um and and you just you just get such a buzz off each other you know and you go out and you work really hard and you do loads of flying and it's really cool you're doing this amazing thing and then you all go back to the bar afterwards and you have a couple of drinks and you go into town or whatever it might be or you have a big party and you all get dressed up in stupid clothes and yeah like all it was all those bits um and then there was sort of other things ancillaries stuck on as well so things like um i remember going we went to france we did some we did a um a battlefield tour just our little course of, of four people plus our um our course instructor we went to france we had a little mini bus and it was just so much fun you know it was i probably probably should be censored for the audience but it was just awesome we had such a great time how many years have you both served and what or who inspired you to join the royal air force so i joined the air force in 2008 so i served 12 years i um, coming on 13. And what or who inspired me to join? I didn't know about the Air Force at all, pretty much, before I got to university. So um, when I started university, I started seeing a very nice chap, a chap called James Turner, chap who I'm now married to. <laughs> so I started, um, like I say, seeing him in my first year. And he was in the University Air Squadron, um, which is something that you may or may not have heard of, not you, Hells, but the wider audience. Um, university Air Squadron is a brilliant organisation as far as I'm concerned. It's the RAF at university, but there's no commitment. So it's, you know, you don't join it and suddenly you have to go and um, do be in the RAF for the rest of your life. Um, it's completely for university students. It is so much fun. It's probably where all that fun that I was talking about with the flying training came from. Because again, on the UAS, it was just a bunch of people who I all of a sudden got on really well with. They were all as bonkers as I was. They wanted to have fun. And it was just really great. Um, so he, my boyfriend at the time, now husband, said, hey, why don't you join that? I sort of went, okay. Um, joined it. And that first year I went flying that summer um and for the first time ever and um I, honestly i got in the aircraft and was like this is so cool <laughs> and then i think the instructor turned around and his line was um well the RF will pay you to do it and i was like where do i sign i'm in sign me up uh and that was it i um was fortunate enough to get through through oasc which is our way of getting into the air force um they wanted me as a pilot as well which was just kind of the the icing on top of the cake, I suppose. And the rest is history. <laughs> What's your most surprising moment while in service? The most surprising moment was probably turning around in the gym at Cranwell once and seeing Prince Harry behind me and being like, oh cool, I'm just gonna keep keep doing my, my squats and my, my presses here. <laughs> that was pretty- that, that beats me. <laughs> I don't know, it's kind of the same thing, right? <laughs> Although it's pretty awkward because you're like, 
I'm I've lost this now. I'm I'm in my sweaty gym kit. I yeah. I there you go. <laughs> that's the way that goes. And of course, I'm sure. Obviously, he remembers that as well. So so that's good. <laughs> what would you say are your greatest achievements in the RAF so far? First of all, getting in as a pilot. There's a large number of people that want to do it. So I think even getting in um, is, is, for me, one of the proud things I've done. Um, and then passing the training, because the training's quite hard as well. So I think that's a, an achievement. Um, I think probably, yeah, being on ops and doing the job, I think is also an achievement. But I think in recent years, probably my biggest achievement is actually coming back after having my daughter. I think that... Um, you know, that's no mean feat for anyone coming back to work after having a child. And I think that um, uh, for me, I'm pretty proud of that, that I've kind of hopefully uh, managed to do it fairly seamlessly in terms of her life, my life, um, and, uh, you know, the, the output that I can give to the, to the Air Force. So I think that's probably, for me, the biggest achievement. What challenges have you faced and overcome either in the Air Force or in your personal life that make you the person you are today? I think, yeah, in terms of what have we overcome in personal lives? Well, I mean, I guess that main and how has it changed or made me the person I am today? I think my dad dying when I was young has massively influenced me because my aunt and my mum brought me up. So I was brought up by, um, by two ladies, lovely ladies. Um, and I think that has really helped me, um, you know, realise that you can do anything. Um, you know, it doesn't matter what your sex is. You can literally overcome, you know, my mum overcame my dad dying when I was a little one and my aunt decided to move in with her and help her. And I think being brought up in that environment has just been really good at, um, you know, uh, showing me that anything can be done if you if you want to do it. Um, I think in terms of my professional life, what does I have to have to overcome? I think I agree with you. I think I'm I'm terrible with that. I am. Um, I definitely felt it um, the most when I was put on. Uh, to be a Stanaval pilot. So for a layman's terms, I guess that would be sort of Ofsted for Typhoon. So I was kind of checking all the pilots that were doing all the same thing and the right thing. And it's a huge responsibility because you're making sure that everyone's doing the right thing. And I definitely felt for the first couple of months, oh my goodness, that they're going to find me out. Um, and I really shouldn't be here. And actually, like you said, you have to sit, sit yourself down and say, the only person that's ever going to stop you anything is doing anything is you. And I think, um, you know, if you've been given that position, it's because people genuinely believe in you and you are good enough to do it. And the, it's only the little monkey on your shoulder that's telling you that you can't. So I think that's what would be my two uh, challenges that uh, that I wouldn't say I've overcome the confidence imposter syndrome thing. I, I think it's still a, an eternal battle, but I think I'm definitely at least aware of it um, and, uh, you know, can work at it, I think. Don't let it take over. No. That monkey. <laughs> what kind of exciting opportunities have you both had during your RAF career? Flying Typhoon is pretty exciting. Um, <laughs> so that's, that in itself is amazing. Um, and it's sometimes pinch yourself. I, do I actually get paid for this? 